All right. Good afternoon. We are here in another special episode on site at Yarra Valley. We're in Barik Wine Store and we have a special guest, Brendan the Wine Animal. I'm Jason. And I'm Trent. And we're here on an unprofessional, unapologetically unfiltered wine journey. And we have a saying here, Jace. And our saying here is drink more, try, try more, more, learn, learn more. more. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Brendan, thank you so much for joining us here. Guys, nice. thanks for coming all the way down here. You know, I don't get many visitors from up north, so <laughs> it's nice to have it's nice to have some Sydney ciders come down and explore this great region. Well, based on the experience we just had, I think you'll get more visits is the way I see it. I need to spend more time here. And so for those that um, may not be aware of Brendan, Brendan is the wine animal. He has an Instagram account. He's got a website, wineanimal.com.au. He does a lot of things that in the wine industry that we're going to delve into, but he's taken us on a special tour of Yarra Valley uh, and we've already t- seen one site so far and it's been an amazing experience. We're, we're keen to find out more. Before we uh, dive into Brendan, your story and, and Yarra Valley itself, we always like to ask a few icebreaker questions to get to know you. Do um, I need more alcohol or all that? Not yet. Okay, it, it's, right, right, right. it's all safe. Okay. <laughs> and so I might hand over to Trent. Trent, did you want a few? Yeah. Ask so, a few Brendan, is there that most memorable wine moment or most memorable wine that you've had that you could share with us? Um, yes. It was before I was really, really into wine. Hmm. Um, like um, it was in San Francisco and it was with, um, well, I mean, I refer to them as my American parents. Um, they're, you know, two people that are, are, are older than us. Um, yeah. could be our parents that have helped us through our lives. Um, and it was a Stag's Leap Artemis Cabernet, so from Napa Valley. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, it was super expensive. We only did a half bottle at a steakhouse. It was extremely expensive, but I never forget that wine. And it probably goes to show the, yeah. the company. Yeah. Um, and then... You know, I mean, the memorable wines happen all the time. But yeah. that's probably the one that stands out the most. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's hard enough choosing a wine of the year, yeah. let alone choosing the wine. of your lifetime. <laughs> you know, yeah. It wasn't like that one made me go like snap, bang, click. Yeah. All right, I'm into wine now. Like it was more like that's the one I remember the fondest that's and great. the experience of that wine. Awesome. Okay, um, off the back of that one, is there a favorite grape varietal? Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Easily. Easily Chardonnay. I would. I if there was only one wine left that I could drink for the rest of my life, I would choose Chardonnay hands down. It wouldn't even be a competition. Just to elaborate, is there a Chardonnay from a certain region as well? Oh, uh, I mean, probably Beechworth. If Beechworth. I'm really being yeah. completely honest, yeah. I mean, I don't delve enough into French. Yeah. You know, Burgundy. You know, the home of Chardonnay. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Everyone that knows me knows my thoughts on Burgundy. Yeah. Um. But yes, Beechworth, Yarra, um, Macedon, awesome. all those Victorian Chardonnay. I think. Okay. We looked at the past and now we're going to look into the future. Is there still a wine that you still want to try? I mean, the all the big Bordeaux, all the first growths I would mm. like to try. Yeah. I've had the luxury of having, you know, amazing age Cheval Blanc um, yeah. a few times um, as far back as 70, 78 or 68. I yeah. can't remember which one it was. Um, a birthday wine. I think it was 78, a birthday yeah. wine of, of a friend. Um, I've had a well, – we have we had a corked Latour, which was oh. just – Depressing. Shopping. So I would like to do all the first growths. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to do DRC. Yeah. And, you know, I've done Russo. Um, yeah. All those big names. And I mean, I think that probably the, maybe the ultimate would be Screaming Eagle from Napa Valley. That'd yeah. be one. That, that'd be it. It'd be the big board. All the first growths, Screaming Eagle and DRC. Wow. That'd be my top three. All the so very- if anyone wants to share them with me, you know where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of money as well. Um, okay, cool. Um Next question is around, is there any kind of different wine pairings, food and wine pairings that you can kind of share with us as well? I mean, those that know me and have been to my events or that follow me a bit know that, you know, I I truly believe that the food can elevate wine. I don't, you know, disregard that, you know, duck and pinot goes yeah. well together yeah. and raising and oysters or champagne and caviar. Like I get that. Yeah. I just, I truly think that an amazing meal and an amazing food can go with almost any amazing yeah. wine as well. They don't have to go hand in hand, yeah. you know, like you, you drink, you know, you drink from places where you get the food from, you know, like you yeah. should in Italy, if the wine comes from there, you mm. eat the pasta and the salad. Yeah. Like I get that. Um, I think, I mean, we're having burgers now and we're going to drink Chardonnay. Yeah. Like I just think that, you know, you got to go by the weather, the people you're with, yeah. the mood you're in, you know, if you go to Vanya, you could see the flower day or a fruit day, you know, yeah. you got to know what to drink, when to drink it. Yeah. There's nothing really unusual for me. I'm not a, like, I love turns, but I won't drink it with cheese. I yeah. don't eat blue cheese. I don't yeah. think that I would rather have a sweet dessert or yeah. a, a golden gay time for those that have, you know, yeah. know me. Um, 
Golden Gay Time and Saw Terms They're is the, the one. Best. Yeah. That's the one. I haven't tried it. That's the one. You came, that. you came in Gay Time. That's life changing. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably one of the best. That was in one. Of the, that was the best one I had this year. Was the ninety nine. You came. Wow. Wow. Last year. It's very early this year, so. So we've got to try that for another episode then. Get a bother. You can. Gay time. <laughs> Brendan's sharing content. Man. This is where to go. <laughs> this is what you've got to do. You've got to, you've got to feed off each other. <laughs> so obviously you've been through the wine journey from amateur to where you are now. Is there like any kind of lessons learned or um, any uh, thoughts or learnings that you can kind of share with us and I'm also still the viewers? Very, I'm still a very much, a, I'm an amateur. Yeah. I still, you're always learning. I think yeah. the more you think you know, the less you actually know. Yeah. I think, you know, the amount of wines you try, you know, I get asked a lot, how many wines did, you know, how many yeah. wines do you try a week? How many yeah. wines do you try a day? Yeah. Like whatever that, you know, and that varies depending on family, mood, yeah. weather, like what you're doing, how busy you are. Um, I think that the only way to get better at tasting wine and, and picking wine is to taste, obviously, yeah. and blind taste. I think I'd, you need to do a lot of blind tasting, yeah. heaps of blind yeah. tasting, because that's the way to really, you know, like I pour a lot for my wife now and it's like, what's that? You know, and she's like, I don't know, I like it. You know, whereas I would be like, she poured it for me, I would be like, you know, it's not this, it's not that, it could be that, it could be that. You're trying to break yeah. it down. Yeah. And I think you'd never stop learning. Like I still very much look at, you know, there's so many people out there that have, you know, encyclopedias of knowledge that yeah. would tell you that they don't yeah. know yeah. anything, you know, like that's just how it is. It's with any industry and any yeah. profession. I think you can always learn and adapt and and change as the wine industry change, you know, Yeah. which we'll talk about later, how the wine industry, my time is what's changed about yeah. it. So. Stephen, you in the Yarra Valley, been here for quite a while. You don't think you understood? No, the Yarra I, don't, Valley. I don't understand the Yarra Valley. <laughs> like, I mean, I understand, you know, um, the climate where we are located, what we produce well, what's happening, what's going on, and that's just through, you know, yeah. going to wineries yeah. and meeting the owners like we just did before, and like going through the vineyards and yeah. talking and using Instagram, using Facebook, using. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't really use TikTok, yeah. Um, but using these platforms to reach out, the winemakers and the wineries, they love it. They love meeting people who share a passion. passion yeah like they do, you know? So it's not like, don't be shy to reach out and be like, hey, I'm coming to your winery next yeah. week. You know, is, can I, can I meet you? Can I do a tour? Is this, you know, can I have a look at the yeah. winery? You know, can I, can we do barrel samples? You know, like some will be very, very open to it yeah. and some won't. Like it's just. Has that surprised you though? How open some of those winemakers are um, when you feel it's very it kind of. start because yeah. when I started, it was more like just post a photo, <laughs> post a photo of a bottle, like just yeah. to record what you were drinking. And it started very like, you know, nonchalant and very like, Whatever. Whereas now it's like it's a it's a means of yeah a, it's a, it's a means of income yes yeah. it's a means of expressing myself and what I want to do you know but there's a, it's very cliche and very um I don't know what the right word is like it's like my my calling it's like a passion mm. like I feel like I was I was not destined to do this. <laughs> made for it like, yeah, I know it sounds it sounds corny and yeah, cheesy but yeah. like I truly I believe that like I believe yeah, the universe yeah. put me where I am yeah. to do, to do this and yeah. to express, you know, the way that I express wine or I express whatever I'm yeah. doing to people in a realistic way. And yeah. I think that, you know, you have to be authentic. You just have to. Fantastic. That's another good lesson to learn. Be mm. as real as possible. If you don't like something or it's not for you, just say it. Yeah. Yep. You can upset people, but people get upset anyway. I get yeah. called all sorts of names on social media. Yeah. In and private everyone's messages. got different tastes. Correct. So you can't please everybody. Right it's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, it, that was the-, the That's uh, icebreaking. Ice ice oh, <laughs> We, we've capsized the, um, the iceberg. It's, it's tipped over. <laughs> you did well, but you were kind of touching on a few things there. We're, I, we're gonna, I told you I can talk. Yeah. Oh, which is great. We're, we're, we're going to talk a bit about Yarra. We're going to talk about a bit on, on your wine journey. But I, I, I was just thinking about how this opportunity came up. And this, to me, kind of resonates with, with your, your mission and what you're doing. Uh, but also it aligns with what, what we wanted to do because when we were signing up the podcast, we wanted to make wine more accessible, break down the barriers of wine. And what you said just then about how those in the wine industry actually want to talk about it, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to ask questions. The perfect example was where to the winery you took a Soma where we met Brett. And Brett's the owner of the winery and, and he shared so much knowledge mm -hmm. and was obviously so enthusiastic about it. It's a great example about, you know, what I think there's some perception out there that maybe it's a snobby kind of industry in the wine industry. Yeah. It's not the case. And and also through the wine animal and, and what Brenda's doing, it's clear. Like we've, we've hanged out with you for probably an hour, an hour and a yeah. half. But Hang on, we've got, what are we at now? Yeah, 10, we've been like <laughs> two, two, two or three hours almost. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're flying. There you go. But I feel like uh, you've already shared so much, yeah. which is fantastic. So, so really appreciate that. Look, let's... Let's have a chat about the wine animal and and how it came about 
Um, what what triggered you to start up the business? And then also, what's the for those out there? What's the services and products that the business offers? Yeah, so um, I was a compulsive gambler for a very long time, thirteen years, I think it was that we worked. Well, actually, it was probably more than thirteen years. But I was thirteen years. I was really bad, um, and that came all out. To a head, you know, eventually everything, every addict gets caught somehow or something happens. Um, and then there was obviously there was a major void in my life that needed to be filled in order for me to do the changes and the things necessary to, you know, to grow and expand. And I always liked wine. I mean, I like to drink. I mean, mm. let's be honest. I mean, yeah. a lot of people do. Um, and there was just an opportunistic moment where my mum and my sister went to America they tried a wine. They came back. They're like, you have to find this wine for us. We want to drink it. It was rosé. I love rosé. It's sort of like where I started. Um, it was Hampton Water. So that's um, Gerard Patron from Languedoc in France and Jesse and John Bon Jovi, who you may know, John Bon Jovi, the singer. And I reached out to them to find out where I could find the wine in Australia. Found out you couldn't. Some dodgy French dude from Vietnam called me the next day. And then four days later, four bottles of this wine turned up on my doorstep. Wow. Express yeah. Post from France. Yeah. And that sort of got me like going. Meanwhile, I was like dealing with, you know, financial, like real stress and family issues, right? Like really badly. But all of a sudden I had this like, oh, could I import this wine? Could yeah. I potentially sell this wine? Could I become a brand? Could I do Instagram? That's where the wine, like what was Robnick Group or the fun wine guy, sorry, was the first one, the yeah. fun wine. That's where that all started. And then the next thing I know, we were researching importing taxes, duty shipping and then the next thing I know I had two and a half thousand bottles on a container yeah. coming over so I was at my brokest point financially yeah. and I invested the most amount of money in something I ever invested yeah. so it was like a really it was an awful time to do it yeah. to be perfectly honest you know you my would've... marriage was on the rocks I had a young I had one young son like and I was working on the marriage so it was it was you know I was doing what I could do there and myself more so but that's when it started and then I started selling that one I'd rock up to um, re retail outlets and bars in my, you know, high vis top, and you know, you all know I'm a tradie. Um, you know, boots, short shorts, yeah. whatever, and have a pink bottle of rose yeah. to yeah. sell to someone. You know, and people are like, "What is this guy doing?" And it was a great selling point. It worked fantastically because it was like it was a great icebreaker. You know, here comes a tradie with pink rose. Yeah. Like we got to try it, and it was really, really good. And you had the backing of the Bon Jovi's, yeah, which was great. And then you know, COVID sort of came in and hit. We were doing a lot of like. I was playing beer pong online against Jesse, like a live stream yeah. of beer pongs. His dad would be like, I remember one Sunday, I was not at my sister's house with yeah, the kids yeah, when yeah, you shouldn't yeah, have been. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a Saturday afternoon, sorry. And I was sitting down and um, I got a message from someone saying, oh, John Bon Jovi just said, Robnick Group, your oh. website on live on air wow. doing their, at their um, Thanksgiving wow. dinner, right? And I was like, what? And they were like, bang. And then all of a sudden my phone was like, bang, Squarespace was just like, bang, notification yep. sales, like just constantly going. And then it just sort of built and built and built and built. Yeah. And then Dan Murphy's came in and then it just went, oh, crashed back to earth. Yep. So, you know, we'd established a price point, we'd established a brand, a logo, an imagery around it. And then Dan Murphy's come in and basically crush it. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Go it's gone. So they they dropped the price. Yeah. That affected me like um, in terms of all the wholesalers, the suppliers I was dealing with were like, well, you undercut us. You sold out to Dan Murphy's. And I was like, I, I, I had nothing to do with it. Yeah. And like, as if you didn't know, like it really affected our reputation. And by that stage, you know, COVID was in full swing. No one was really buying wholesale. So I was relying a lot on retail sales and fans, Bon Jovi fans to buy the yeah. wine. And then through the retail space and then through Instagram, as that started to grow slowly, yeah. I started to get access to different wines. And COVID was tough on restaurants. Restaurants yeah. were offloading bottles, bottles that you couldn't find and couldn't buy. So I was like, well, hang on. Do I start to buy these bottles and offload them yeah. because I can get access to them? And then that sort of started to build, you know, the fun wine guy's reputation and and the Robnick group, the wholesale thing yeah. sort of just, I got, I sort of feigned that away. Yeah. I had another brand that I imported for a while that just yeah. sort of fizzled out as well. They sold out to the opposite of Dan Murphy's end up, whoever the opposite is. Yeah. So the same thing. They just go to big business, easier, right? Yeah. But it hurts the brand. Yeah. yeah. And the retail thing then took over. Then the fun wine guy started to really spike and I, I focused on that. Yeah. And then now through that, the wine animal was what I was always wanted to be referred to as. It was sort of like my thing, the wine yeah. and jungle, the jungle wine guy, like that kind of wine animal. Yeah. And it just had a great ring to it. And then that has sort of like the last six months, I really invested and put a lot of effort and time into it. You know, ask my wife, you know, it's all I ever do and all I ever yeah. talk about. I, Which did, keep means my, I did keep my marriage and I had two more children. So that yeah. that fun story about the gambling, that, had, that did have a happy ending. So I feel like 
the wine actually helped with everything. It helped with everything. Like, the wine gave me like <laughs> an opportunity to express like I'm very yeah. extrovert. I'm very like out there. Like I'm very loud. I'm obnoxious. I'm yeah. rude. Some people think I'm rude or I'm, or I'm um, what's that word? Um, cocky, arrogant, whatever you want to call it. I, I just have real passion and yeah. a real desire to want to share this. So it filled the void that I needed to fill with something that I was truly passionate about. So it was like, it's a match made in heaven. This is the cheesiest yeah. podcast I've ever, I've ever done. I think yeah. I'm using all these cliches. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then from that, the, the, the fun, like, you know, I had a marketing manager through my carpentry that I met that ended up coming on board and helping me late this last like six months. So, you know, you need to be one brand. You can't be the one animal and you can't be the fun one. Mm. Right? You can't, That's why. you don't okay. have time. So then it was the merge had to come when the website was new website was done, when yeah. the, the Yarra Valley focus was done and what he did in his research and what I basically, what I paid him all that money for was to tell me what I needed to focus on in order to grow. Yeah. And that was, you already known as the Yarra Valley guy. You could really make the Yarra Valley your backyard. You could get to know the yeah. wineries, the winemakers, make people come to you for the Yarra Valley, right? And so that's the, the website primarily was put in place to showcase the Yarra Valley mm. and what was in the Yarra Valley. Now, I don't have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to buying wine stock to yeah. put it on, the, to sit it in a warehouse to slowly sell retail. So a lot of mine is... Um, allocation stuff that I get, small batch, or order it and as I go through the winery yeah. and sell it as we sell it online. And then the the my real love and passion with it is hosting events and showing yeah. people different wines, my ticketed, my themed events. That's what I really enjoy doing and I love hosting. I love going out for dinner. My wife will tell you I love going out for dinner. But that's really what the wine animal is, is yeah. about, you know, like – what you guys are doing in trying to break down wine and, and the stigma around it, yeah. and we need more people yeah. doing that. And what I want to do is just bring it to the yeah. people, like physically yeah. bring yeah. it. Like, have you guys come down? Yeah. Let's go to, you know, we could have gone to four wineries in two hours, but yeah. it's not fun. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not enjoyable. Yeah. One winery, an hour and a half, vineyard walk, tours, reasons yeah. why, see the grapes, yeah. back vintage stuff, you know, yeah. meet the owner. Like, the owner came in especially for that for yeah. us, you know, like that wasn't, you know, and that's easy to do. You just reach out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the wine animal is about, Yarra Valley, but but not pigeonholed. Not, I want to not be like just, just yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, a lot of international wines as well, but it, it's it's the hosting of the events, the tours to different wineries. Yeah, so the tours is something that I want to like, work towards. Like it's very hard now to be like, yeah, I'm just going to run a tour every weekend or yeah. during the week when I have a Monday to Friday day job and another business that yeah. I run and yeah. that I'm you know I'm partners with somebody, so I'm responsible to yeah. make sure that you know what I do affects him. You know, if I'm not working and doing my own thing, then he's not getting as much money. Yeah. So it's you know it's a very tight. And hard to run. Yeah, and I worked at a winery for up until you know four weeks ago as well on weekends, just to throw another. I saw that on the website. Job in there, yeah, I did that for a while, but that had to unfortunately that had to um, stop just to create time. Yeah, the what the real wine animal wants to do is, is do events and bring yeah. wines okay. to you know to people. Like so, my themed events, you know, buy a ticket, come and try bottles that you wouldn't normally buy because yeah. you wouldn't lash out and buy a Latour just to drink on a Saturday night. But if you invest. In this ticket, you'll get seven bottles plus a little even that was corked. Sorry. What are some of the themes that you're doing at the moment? Um, I've got I'm an Italian night coming up, yeah. Piedmont night. So we'll focus on the Piedmont region completely. Yeah. Um, we're doing a my favorite event, which is the Richie. I call it the Richie Rich. So it's like the um, the ducks nuts of wine. You know, we drink like you know Schaaf, Crook, yeah. all the top 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 echelon of wines. Yeah. Um, that's coming up. I want to do, I've done Bordeaux, I want to do a, we're doing an Australian Chardonnay challenge. Yeah. So we're going to put the best of the best Australian Chardonnays up against each other. Um, same with Pinot. I'd like to do all the King Grapes in like a best of the best from Australia. Yeah. Um, I love to, I did Yarra Valley versus Burgundy recently with um, Harry from Vin and Vine. So there you go, Harry, there's your shout out. <laughs> um, and we did that. That was a fantastic experiment to do like similarly priced yeah. wines from, you know, overseas versus here. I'd like to do Yarra Valley versus Hunter. I've actually got in June. Um, here you go. You hit it here first. We're doing a an event. Uh, Chris from Tyrrell's Wines. Yeah. Chris Tyrrell is actually uh, coming down wow. to the Yarra, and we're going to be doing. He's going to be bringing a bunch of unlabeled wines, um, a bunch of back vintage stuff, and we're hoping that um, Sam Middleton and maybe Ben Porte, we can do a bit of a um, big themed. Hunter versus Yarra, <laughs> Chardonnay, Sam, whatever else we yeah. put up there. So that's going to be, you heard it here first. I haven't even released that yet. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. This is the thing that I've, that's really stood out in the time that we've uh, spent together. 
you are able to establish some fantastic relationships in the wine industry. How does that come about? Is it is it just personality? Are you just reaching out? Is there something else? I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people that don't like me or think that I'm yeah. too out there or, yeah. you know, but like I, you know, I said all along, like you cannot physically please everybody, yeah. right? And you just need to be yourself and be authentic. And people can see that. I think if you were being, if I was that, you know, that influencer we'll call it yeah. the wine influencer. Yeah. It's just like everyone is the greatest wine I've ever drunk. Mm, yeah. You know, this is amazing. Twenty dollars, ten dollars, like fifty dollars, yeah. whatever. Like, and there is a lot of them, right? And yeah. good on them. Like they're doing them, and that's fine. Yeah. But if I think something's bad, I poured two, uh, one and a half bottles of wine down the sink last night. Yeah. yeah. wasn't faulty. It just wasn't good. Yeah. Right? Nothing wrong with that. And I'll post about it, right? Yeah. And I'll say why I didn't like it. Yeah. Right. And that's I think. People see the, the the authenticity. That's why I post a lot and stories, you know, at work building a house. I don't just say I'm a tradie yep. and you never ever see it. And I didn't want to put my face on there. I didn't put my face on there till like this year. Yeah. Oh. My marketing guys like you have to put your face on there. People have to see you. Yeah. People need to relate to you. They yeah. want to know what you're dealing with, what you're going through. Yeah. You know? And then people, that's that's the thing I get a lot. I love you. I love listening to your journey. You know, I'm going to do a lot more focus on like my history. You know, like. Yeah. How did I get to where I am? Like, yeah. how did I recover from the gambling addiction? And my wife was petrified that I would replace gambling with alcohol. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I'm stepping from sitting in front of a poker machine for hours on end on a day to consuming wine for a hobby and passion yeah. and business yeah. is what I used to say, you know? Yeah. So it was like, there's a lot of stigma around, you know, wine and alcohol yeah. and, you know, what that can do. Yeah. yeah. And you just have to be, I got no issue talking about gambling. I've done podcasts on gambling. I've been yeah. on radio shows for gambling all the time. Like I don't shy away from it. I tell people how much I lost or what I think I lost. Like it's, it's true. They're true me. Yeah. You know, I'm not hiding it. Yeah. You know, the other thing that you touched on there was Dan Murphy's. And I remember in one of the comments you, you, you wrote to, to something that we had, you said something to the effect of Dan Murphy's is the devil, something like that. Yeah, the something devil, to that the effect. devil Dan. Oh, look, I mean, I, there is a place and there, yeah. is, there is a need for businesses like that, right? Yeah. And I understand that. And there is some things that I still have to buy from there, right? Because it, oh, it's it's okay. cost effective to do it, yeah. right? It, it just it just is. Yeah. And they have the range, they have the variety. It's easy, right? I, and people love easy. The easier yes. it is, the better it is, right? I just have a bee in my bonnet about the way that they crush the smaller guy, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's- you know, they would have teams and they do have people that sit there surfing Instagram, Facebooks, yeah. TikTok, looking for people that are having the next product, bringing it. Like they're, they're searching for that. Yeah. That's what they're actually after. And then they'll come in and take it from you with no care in the world. With yeah. that real example before. With yeah, that. that's real. Yeah. That really happened. And they've got, they probably, even, they probably haven't even got the current vintage of Hamden Water sitting on their shelf yeah. because they're still getting rid of the old stuff because they took so much of it to yeah. get the deal done at yeah. such a, and their profit margins are, you know, are much smaller because yeah. they're doing such mass volume. Yeah. Volume, you know, like, and I don't despise anybody for going and shopping at Dan Murphy's. I'll yeah. give you shit about it, yeah. like, as a laugh. Yeah. And yeah, I'll say, yeah, you know, yeah. support small because I would rather buy from Mike. Yeah. You know, even if it is an elevated couple of dollars, you yeah. know, cost here and there, but you get service, you get look at where you can sit and do what you're yeah. doing. Well, that's what I wanted you can't to do this ask. At Dan Murphy's. Well, that's what I wanted to ask. If 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 not Dan Murphy's, for those that are starting their wine journey, where do you recommend that they go? Is you, it- you'll always find boutique, small independents in e- everywhere you go. Yeah, you know, you can go to Long and go to Wine Press Wine. You can go to Beechworth and you'll have you know, um, like cafe and small di- small like wine dealers, you'll have local like IGAs that will stock, mm. you know, the IGA in Mount Evelyn, for example, stocks an incredible array of Yarra Valley wine, mm. you know, a huge wall of Yarra Valley wines. It will always be the small guy. Yeah. You know, otherwise, you know, from the wineries direct. Yeah. yeah. You know? And it's it's such a great experience to come in and, and see the see where the where the grapes are growing and and where the wines are coming from. You completely translate it that change, into it changes it. how you perceive. You know, uh, I would the love tasting. to go to all the regions and travel around and that. But you know, I have three kids. I have a young, very young boy, yeah. mm. um, <laughs> middle poor middle child, yeah. and then the older one at school now. So like it's a lot. It's a lot more difficult. And two businesses. And you know, if I was doing one animal full time, yeah. and supporting my family on that, I mean, obviously, you'd be spending a lot more time in vineyards and wineries. But it's just not. It's part of the plan, but not anytime yeah. soon. It's probably why you're you're called the wine animal, and I want to I want to dig it's into that. It's that passion, I see. It's, it, like- it's the passion, and it's also I see it's relentless, not in a bad way, but you're juggling you so to, many different have things, to, have and to. I'm struggling to juggle my three kids uh, and hard. family. Kids are hard. I don't have kids. I should have kids. They're great. They're very <laughs> hard. They're very hard. What's the secret? How do you do it? How do you do all of this? I think you have to have a very understanding and loving wife. I think yeah. that helps a lot. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think you need to you need to ensure, and this is something I don't do very well, is that when you are on 
family time, kid time and that, that you, you know, you were away from your phone. Mm. You know, my six year old says to me all the time, you know, daddy, it's, you know, it's moving on. Don't go on your phone. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't want to hear that from my kid. Like that's yeah, yeah, it's hurtful, yeah. you know, but it's true. And I know I have an obsession with my phone and I reckon there'd be a lot of people that hand on their heart couldn't say that they don't, yeah. you know, it's just part of our life, Yeah, you know? So that's one thing that I think I need to get better at. Yeah. And I think just juggling when you are home and helping, that you are home and helping. In that moment. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You're just, you're there to do what, yeah. as a father and as a husband, you know? And my wife is, you know, it's the first day without me at home now for since the 20th yeah. of December, you know? It's, and she's got another four weeks to go with three kids at home while I'm at work. Yeah. You know? It's brutal. We want to say thanks to your wife. So. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, the work is heaps easier. I don't, I've never doubted. I've never ever once said that being a stay-at-home mum is easy because it is, I had the boys alone yesterday for, what, 2.45 till... Eight o'clock, and it's so hard. Yeah. I burnt yeah. my dinner. Yeah. I ruined my meat. Yeah, like yeah, I had yeah. to shovel it down. I had one screaming to get yeah. want to go to bed. The next one didn't want to go to yeah. bed. I had a six year old wanting to watch a movie on the couch yeah. with me because it was our movie night. But trying to get the little one to bed. Yeah. Oh man, and yeah. not just putting iPads in front of them, right? Nate, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you, you try not to. You yeah, try, but unfortunately, no, no. sometimes you have it's to. Hard. You it's have hard. It's hard. It's hard. Especially with us. I've got two kids. He's got three kids, and going on this wine trip. Yeah. Is, I think it has you, need, been, has you need help. You need help. You need help. I, yeah. help. I imagine this trip. So we've we've gone to South Australia. We're now in Victoria. I imagined it as the ultimate trip. We're going around Australia, tasting wine. Why not? But then I realised, oh, I've got kids and I've got a family, and they probably don't want to do the yeah. wineries. So I've been, <laughs> I've, been to, I've been back to America twice since I've had kids. I've taken both of my, well, my oldest and my middle one. I've taken them both to Disneyland before they were two, and then the oldest one's been now twice because I think Disneyland is the best place in the world. It's mm. so amazing, but. I haven't been to Napa, but when me and my wife went all those years traveling before, like Napa was one of the first places we would visit. Yeah. But now it's like, oh, Napa with kids? Oh, yeah. no way. I'm not yeah. doing that. You know, I couldn't imagine driving my kids around to wineries yeah. all day. Yeah. Like there's only so many that they can do, you know? I also found the Napa wineries when I went there almost feel a bit more snobby as well. They yeah, see kids think, and go, oh. Yeah, I think that it can come with the territory. Yeah. It can come with the label, yeah. you know, like, and I think it comes with um, history, with price, yeah. with, yeah. you know, I mean, everyone's trying to make the most amount of money yeah. that they can. So it's like, well, I'm going to put my label at this level and then I want this kind of clientele, yeah. you know, like we yeah. have the same thing yeah. out here in the Arrow Valley. Yeah. You know, we have your small boutique or mass produced wines, let's call it. And then you have your, you know, your upper echelon, you know, your Levantine Hills who yeah. want to get clientele yeah. that have money, that have yeah. A, a social status or yeah. symbol, and that yeah. that's okay because that's what they want yeah. to do, yeah. you know. And that's what I try and say to everybody. I'm like, don't disregard these wineries because they have hundred dollar, two hundred dollar wines, or they seem like they're extravagant. Yeah. You know, don't just go to the small guy all the time yeah. in wineries because you never know. You know, you might borderly make some amazing Pinot Noir from Lusatia Park. I had a the Jimmy Watson winning um, '96 Debordelli Shiraz yeah. that Mike had here. He got it from the family direct. Yeah. And it was it was incredible. Yeah, you know, Dubois, 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 Shiraz. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, they were called. Uh, all, we drunk a blind, and they the end call from the group was um, a ninety six or ninety eight Sonon Re. Mm. So that tells you the yeah. quality yeah. of what they were drinking. Yeah, you know, and it's Dubois, and it just has a name because they do mass produced. Yeah, wines. <laughs> yeah. Just stigma. Yeah. Try everything. Don't judge a book by its cover. Find what you like. Yeah. Find what you like. I like Chardonnay. I like Rosé. Yeah. You know, I don't like Cab Yarra Valley Cabernet. I'll openly say that. Like, I don't, it's not my taste when it's young, especially. Yeah. You know, I love, yes, I love Quintet. I love Yarra know, Yearing number one, but they are blends and they have age. Yeah. You know, so. Now, you're, you're not just a, you're not just a Yarra person, but we are in Yarra Valley. It's my first trip here. I think it's your second, second yeah. trip here. You're able to, uh, <laughs> able to share a bit about what makes Yarra Valley special for you in terms of a wine region. I think the climate is really favourable to the grapes that I like. I think Chardonnay, Pinot, dominant, which we are. We know the Yarra Valley was built on Cabernet. Mm. Uh, Cabernet was the pillar that built the Yarra Valley. It grew great. It ripened well. You know, that cool climate and the hills and the sun, and all the cool nights, all that. And then all of a sudden, you know, the Pinot and Chardonnay became more popular. Yeah. Right? So I think that the, the style of and the style that they make here suits my palette like yes i love a, a burgundy with heaps of savory yeah. and you know texture and that's fantastic but i also love a light um floral and elegant pinot that we produce here um i think it's i mean i grew up 
you know, 15 minutes from the door, 20 minutes doorstep from the Yarra Valley. So it's always been close to where I am. And now that I live in the Yarra Valley and I live, you know, the vineyard where I make for the grapes for our rose, my rosé with stew comes from is like three minutes away from my yeah. house. You know, the kids can get involved. The wineries out here have a lot of, um, a lot more now with kid-friendly areas, yeah. space um, and that. So I think that's really what makes it unique and special yeah. for me. Yeah. You know, I've got, you know, there's 176 wineries or something out here, you know, and I may have, you know, scratched a quarter of them, you know, I'd love to visit the rest of them, but. Wow. And you live here. That's time amazing. is poor, mate. Time is yeah, poor. Yeah, yeah. Time is poor. I tell you, I'm always on the, I'm always on the time watch. Yeah. yeah. You any, no, uh, I was going to say like this, the wine world is such a kind of broad world to kind of go into. How do you kind of approach it? Like, you can just look at Yarra Valley, you look at a few wineries, but then outside of that one, as you mentioned, there's like there's so many more other wineries. I just find it sometimes overwhelming to go, how do I find out about that? How do I find out about that? How do I find out that? It's, I mean, it's hard. It's, I mean, you can't just drink, you know, yeah, ten bottles a yeah, day yeah. to be like, oh, yeah, I've just yeah. tried every wine from this vineyard. Yeah. You know, like it's 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 difficult. And if you have someone like me who's like you know really passionate and eager, and you know, yeah. wine wanker or wine snob, but yeah. you know, my wife and they yeah. refer to me, my family refer to me as yeah. right. And then you have somebody like my wife who just wants her. You know, her one wine yeah. from the Barossa that she absolutely loves and doesn't care about the $500 mm. Cap Franc or the, you know, the $200 Chardonnay. Like she just wants to drink what she enjoys. And then that's, I think, sometimes how I have to sit back and look at it and go, I got friends coming over or something. Like, oh, what am I going to open? Like it becomes this like hoo ha of like, yeah. go to the fridge and you're like, oh, is that good enough? Or is that not good <laughs> enough? Or is that, oh, do I want this? Do I want that? Or like, and then sometimes I just like, oh, look, mate, just drink what you like to drink. Yeah. If you like Chardonnay, drink Chardonnay. If you like buttery Chardonnay, drink buttery Chardonnay. If you like Sauvignon Blanc, drink Sauvignon Blanc. If you like Champagne, drink Champagne. You know, like I could serve my wife a 96 Krug and it would not impress her in the slightest because she doesn't like aged Champagne. Yeah. I could serve her a Prosecco like I did the other day from Italy, some yeah. top DOCG Prosecco. Yeah. Loved it. Absolutely yeah. adored it. Yeah. Whereas like the Krug for me, 96 Krug is one of the top three wines I've ever consumed. Yeah. yeah. You know, like so it's a, there's like a different level of appreciation. It's not because – She's not good at wine or into yeah. wine. It's just that she understands and appreciates yeah. what she likes. And I think that's like one thing for everybody out there is just you can find out what you like pretty quickly. You can drink a wine and be like, yeah, I like yeah. that or no, I don't. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. got different taste buds, yeah. different yes. fingerprints. You know, don't be – if you want to drink a rosé and you're a 55-year-old VB drinking yeah. dude, drink a rosé. Who cares? It's, it's just like different foods, right? 100%. Like, yeah. 100%. Well, what do you think about – Education in the wine industry. I don't know if you've had any, but have you have you been doing any training? Yeah, okay, zero, great. zero. I say it that I am, yeah. I am I love untrained. That. I am uneducated. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of podcasts. You find people. So for me, right, um, I love um, Erin Larkin's yeah podcast. I like her and her YouTube videos. Yes, I think she expresses wine in a way that resonates with me. I think she has a palate that yeah. I, I can. I call I can her my wine wife. Like, oh, she, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of I'm sure a lot of people do. I'm sure a lot of people do. You know, and then there's critics, um, and wine writers, and wine journalists, and people that that you find that you go, oh, okay, they gave that wine. 98 points and oh, yeah, I really enjoyed that and then oh, they gave that wine 89 points yeah I didn't like that either so you find someone that you that has a, a similar palette mm. to what you like and then you sort of go on that journey with them you know there's great books out there you know Jensis's Encyclopedia of Wine um, Jasper Morrow's Inside Burgundy to learn a little bit about Burgundy I feel like you know you can never know everything about even master soms and masters of wine yeah. don't know everything yeah. yep. you know they know a hell of a lot yeah. But there's still, you know, there's like two, two and a half thousand grape varieties in Italy or 4,000 grape varieties in Italy alone. Like, yeah. who's going to know all of them? Who's going to yeah. recite that? Yeah. No one. Yeah. 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 You can have as many flashcards as you want. You just memorize. I watch a lot of SOM, the SOM TV. It's a great app to watch. Oh, okay. Watch. Yeah. So you just, like, it's like a subscription service yeah. and it's all about wine, basically, and yeah. food. A lot of food, too. You've got to watch that. Short episodes, you know, like five minutes on Alsace, five minutes yeah. on Mosul, five yeah. minutes on Barolo, you know, and you just learn yeah. bit by bit. And podcasts, like what you guys are doing. Yeah. Well, that's why we're learning a lot and, and connecting with, with the industry as so well. I think um, the, probably the last thing I wanted to ask about was about climate change. And you touched on it right at Here the start are. of this. And uh, I think you've got some views on, on the impact of climate change and how that might shape Yarra and probably the rest of the wine industry I mean, in Australia. It's, it's literally through talking to the winemakers, the viticulturalists, who you know, you're lucky enough to come here on a Friday night, for example, and have one of the viticulturalists and winemakers from Yarra Yearing just here regularly, right? You've got um, winemakers from all the vineyards coming in here and buying and supporting local. So you're able to discuss, learn, listen, and even just sit at a different table and listen what they're talking about, yeah. you know, like um, big, Dave Bingle from Oak Ridge, um, Steve from um, well, was it Giant Steps, um, now Melanie, and then all, and you know, Sarah from Yarra Earring is here frequently, and they talk 
amongst themselves because they that's their industry. It's their lives, you know, it's their livelihood. Mm. So they know and understand, you know, like at Levantine Hill, for example, when I did a tour there recently, oh they not even recently, maybe early last year. Mm. Feels like recently. Yeah. You know, the talk was about the temperature increasing over the next eight to ten years. And the temperature increasing, and you know, Brett said it at Suma, right? The northern Italian varietals, the Portuguese, the Spanish varietals that thrive with a little bit more heat yeah. are gonna be the vines that you need to plant here, right? They're gonna do better in the climate. So I think if you're a winery now adapting, and you've sort of seen as we were driving, there was new plantings, there was a lot of, you know, um, you know, as you're driving back in, you'll see, you know, like St. Hubert's, when the original vineyard, they have, you know, acres of unused land at the moment that they've been propagating, waiting to see what they're going to plant. You know, whether they plant Viognier, whether they plant Cabernet again, you know. So I think the change, I mean, we've seen the climate here. Yesterday, it was like the at four o'clock, it was dark. I yeah, couldn't see yeah, yeah, outside. Dark. I mean, it's still, it's, it's still up on my story if you go on and see yeah. it. Like it was, you know, and 10 minutes away at my best friend's house, the driveway flooded away with 68 yeah. mils of rain in an hour. Yeah. Wow. You know, and I had 30 mils in two hours and it was fine. Like I had thunder and lightning, but, you know, and it's so, you know, it's so different from just, you know, a little slope, gentle slope. We've got elevation here. We've got good runoff. Yeah. If you dry grow and you don't irrigate, you know, you've got, there's enough water here. I would say that a lot of vineyards here are irrigated. Yeah. Mm. You know, you've got the old riverbed, the Golden Mile with Levantine, Pimpernel, yeah. Colchium Hills, um, Yearingberg, Mount Mary, you know, all, you know, on the, on the riverbed. So the soil here is, yeah. it grows everything. You can just chuck something in the ground, it'll start growing. Yeah. That kind of highlights how I feel like as as uh, winemakers and those owning vineyards, the ability to adjust and adjust and adapt is yeah. so important. Yeah. Like the the landscape and what Yarra is known for may change due to the impact of this, yeah. this climate change. The Italian varieties will be coming through. Uh, but it's just not something to be stagnant and stay still, which is part of the reason why the wine yeah. industry is so exciting. There's yeah. constant change. You know, like I mean, even like you look at Tassie, our coldest mm. area, right? Even they, the winemakers down there that I communicate with and the wine teams that I communicate with say the same thing, that the, the temperature is getting warmer. You know, the style of wine is going to change <laughs> down there as well, you know, every, everywhere. I mean, you guys have come from the Barossa. It's, yeah. you know, they're probably, the vines are probably further along than what they are yeah. here. And that's just the heat. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Perfect. So we're, we're getting close to the end there. Did you have any other questions? That um, no, I think I'm done with the questions, but. To wrap up, or yeah, final messages for for our audience, those watching and listening. Brendan, any key messages that you want to share about the wine animal Yara wine in general? I mean, I, I mean, I appreciate everyone that follows or reaches out. Or yeah. if you want to ask me a question, do it. Like I'm on my phone all the time anyway, so I might as well be doing something <laughs> instead of scrolling through reels and actually like and and communicating. I mean, I've met some very very long lasting friends. I've made you know some you know what I would call really true friends yeah. through this, like through wine and finding someone that has a similar interest to what you have. Yeah. I think drink what you want to drink. If you want to open that expensive bottle, don't wait for a birthday or a special occasion. Like, I mean, I opened, you know, years ago, I opened a 2016 Giaconda Chardonnay for my mum's birthday. Mm. Uh, my mum and my auntie say like Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. Right, and I opened a Giaconda mm. Chardonnay, which now is like a unicorn wine, yes. right? And the yeah. pricing in that was is astronomical. Yeah. You know, I enjoyed it. My wife was pregnant. She had a tiny little bit. Yeah. And it's like it wasn't appreciated yeah. in there. So now when I do those family things, you bring the wine that you know will be enjoy. Like, you know, like right now we're drinking Medhurst 23 Chardonnay, right? So Simon Steele, who or Sim Steele, who's no longer there anymore. So Medhurst up near Coldstream Hills, up near Suma, where we were before. Um really they they've really come in leaps and bounds the last few years. That their rose would be my favorite rose from the Yarra Valley. Yeah. I think it's the best rose made in the Yarra Valley, the Medhurst Rose. You can put that on camera. You know, that's a thirty or thirty five dollar bottle of wine. You don't have to lash out all the time. Soms will tell you the same thing. Trust sommeliers when you go to a restaurant. Yeah. Trust them. They know what they're doing. Right. But trust your taste. Yeah. If they're going to suggest a cab sav, a young cab sav, yeah. and I'm not going to enjoy it, I'm going to say that's not to my taste. And tell them what you like because like it's the same thing if someone drinks a bottle of wine and it's cork, they're scared to tell the restaurant, well, you're going to pay for something yeah. that's faulty? Yeah. Like, t tell them. Like, yeah. drink what you like. I think key message is drink what you like, drink with people you like to drink with. Yeah. Because it's very short life. I'm almost, yeah. you know, I'm very, I'm getting old. I'm not going to say how old I am, but I'm getting old <laughs> now. Young, I, wanna, I want to enjoy, I feel young. <laughs> yeah. I want to enjoy wine with people who share the same yeah. passion as me, you know? Yeah. You know, Instagram is a huge platform to share and grow and and sell, you know, it's great for me for selling through one animal, you know, like my, my member section, which is my key focus is to look after the members with yeah. private offers and private wholesales and make wine yeah. more accessible. You know, not everyone can get Mount Mary and not everyone yes. can get Samiodia and everyone can get certain wines. And, you know, I would like to make that 
accessible whilst being able to enjoy some of the wines that I want to enjoy on my bucket list as well, my wine bucket list. Definitely. Yeah, we heard a bit of that earlier as yeah, well. Yeah, everyone's got to have a wine yeah. bucket list. Look, Brendan, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I Pleasure. think for me, just just listening to you and, and meeting you in person, the genuine, authentic and passion about wine is absolutely there. But but what really stands out is your friendly nature. Like, <laughs> you, you don't need to reach out to us. You, you didn't need to uh, have a tour with us, have this chat with us, but you wanted to do so. And I think that's all part in what you're talking about. Cool. It's network. It's networking. You know, everyone in, I mean, I'm not in the corporate world or you're in the, yeah. in the corporate side, you know, it's all about networking and using, you know, other people to help, you know, like, it helps you guys. It helps me. It gets as you guys grow, then people go back and rewatch podcasts from early on. Then you gain followers, yeah. and someone becomes a client. Someone becomes a friend. Yeah. You know, like it becomes. It's a way to help everybody grow. You yeah. Know? And there's so many people out there that want to experience what you're doing and want to know. They just got to find a way to find you. Mm. You yes. know, and you've got to. It's a lot of effort. Instagram is hard. Yeah. It's almost as hard as children. Um, <laughs> Maybe so, not. You know, but, you, but like I said to you guys earlier, like, you know, you keep doing what you're doing, keep yeah. being like authentic yeah. and being yeah. real and just showcase, you know, show the show the bloopers, show the real side of you, you know, show it's hard with the children. You're a designated driver, yeah. show them. Yeah. You know what I mean? People want to see that. Yeah. You know, they want to see like, there's a lot of influencers out there that just paid partnership with X, Y, and Z. And oh, this, is, very polished, this is great. Right? It's very yeah. polished. It's very like scripted. It's yeah. very like yeah. someone's filming them to do it all. And, you know, yeah. like they're just like, and that's great. And that, yeah. there's a place for that too. Yeah. But there's also a place for someone to be like, if you were like, this is no good and put over your shoulder, yeah. it's not going to offend yeah. me. It's your, yeah. it's your yeah. taste. Yeah. It's your taste. You know? That's it. I guess that's it. I could talk for hours. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. And so I really appreciate your time. Yeah, anytime. I appreciate you guys coming. That's us uh, at the Wind Up Podcast. As we like to say here, drink, drink more, more, try more, more, learn more. more. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.